Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Benny True Nerd, and welcome to Into the Breach. Ooh, I am excited by this one. So let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a company called Subset Games, and they made FTL faster than light, and it was one of the best games ever made, and I absolutely loved it. And then they went quiet for years and years and years and years. They just went quiet, and now. Oh, they got the band back together. The same programmer, the same artist, the same composer. And FTL had an amazing score. They've got the composer from FTL back. And the same writer, who is in fact Chris Avalone. The same Chris Avalone who wrote parts of New Vegas. Because screw it, let's just basically get all of John's favourite people to make one mega awesome super game. And just in case you're not convinced by this game's pedigree, it's a game about giant stompy time-travelling robots that punch monsters into other monsters. Yeah, you're gonna be wanting this, because I turned it on last night just to check it all ran correctly, and then three hours happened. It's really, really, really good. So here we are on the setup screen, which is all a little bit FTL-ish. So basically, just like how you used to have to pick a ship back in FTL, now you actually have to pick your initial team of giant stompy robots, and also one of your starting pilots. You can unlock more as you actually go along, so I've unlocked one over here, but I'll just start with the default guy, just for the sake of, you know, showing you the base game here. And I've unlocked, yeah, I think I've unlocked one extra team of robots. Yeah, here we are. Yeah, I've unlocked one extra team, but there's another six I haven't actually managed to get my hands on yet. Including this rather lovely guy who appears to be a giant robot with amazing leafy shoulder pads and a massive hook whip. So I'd like to unlock him at some point, yes. And also, you can just build your own team out of any robot you've unlocked, which is really, really, really damn cool. The way you unlock this team, by the way, is earning coins, and coins are basically earned through achievements. If we go back here, say this particular team, the Rift Walkers, I've got to, say, drown three enemies in a single battle, then I'd get one coin for that, and yeah, kill an enemy five tiles away or more with a single special move, and that will get me another coin, and then I can use those coins to buy more squads that also lets me build my own customised squad if that's what I want to do. So yeah, there's actually a lot more flexibility, it's not just like a selection of ships, instead you can build a squad of three out of your preferred robot, and also put in your preferred captain to start you off as well, which is really, really cool. Also, um, FTL style, when it says normal, that just means really hard. This mode is hard, this mode is really cool hard, and this mode is ha 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 screw you. So the basic plot is, it's the future and aliens have taken over the world, so humanity decides to do the only thing it can logically do, which is send three giant stompy robots back in time to stop the bugs before they wipe out humanity. So here we are, we've gone back in time, and now we've just got to stomp on some bugs on these four islands. So let's just nip over to the nice starting lush green island here. If you're from the future, you'll find our island is even further back in time than you expected. If not for the vague, I'd have loved to give you a tour of the old earth relics. Yes, there's some fun old earth relics on this island which we might actually be able to use to take out some vex, the bugs, as we go along, which is lovely. So someone like FTL, this game is basically a game of resource management, where you've got to tensely balance your need for various different resources. This thing at the top is the one you really want to keep an eye on. That's the power grid. The power grid not just for this particular level of this particular island, but the power grid for the entire world, because your mech speed from the future need an awful lot of power to keep going. If that power grid runs out, that means you can't power the mechs, which means the vex are going to win by default, and as a result, of that, it's game over. You need to keep the power grid up. However, you're also going to be needing stars, which you can use to actually buy new equipment once you've liberated each island, and these little things, reactor cores, which you need to actually power up your various weapons and special abilities. So you need to constantly balance the need for all of those. When you get missions here, you basically get to choose what the bonus rewards are going to be. You don't get these by default, instead you need to actually complete bonus objectives if you want them. So in this case, we've got one star to actually buy new equipment with, and one bit of grid power, which would increase the size of the power grid, because of course the power Power grid will also be taking knocks during missions. We'll get into that in a moment. You lose if this reaches zero. Yeah, don't lose that. So in this case, uh, both of these seem to be about the same. Sure, there are technology vaults buried in the region. We've got to drive the VEC out before they can damage them. Indeed. So my bonus objectives are, I've got to take less than three grid damage. I really hope I can do that. <laughs> Otherwise, something's gone horribly wrong. And I've got to protect the emergency batteries, which are those special little ones at the back there. So let's dive into here and we can talk about combat. So, in come the starting little vec there, just little buggy bugs that need to be squished, which is always welcome. So, I've got my three mechs. This is my giant punchy mech. He's very good at running up to things and punching them. This is my tank. He's fairly good at shooting things, but it's also partly about support and positioning. And this is my artillery, which is going to do a tiny bit of damage, but is mostly a support class. 
So, slap down the mount, they come charging out of the sky, and all the buildings suddenly start yelling, Hey, the Riftwalkers have come to help us! Huzzah! So what happens first is, the bugs get their moves. The bugs move into position, and we get to see what, when I next hit end turn, the bugs are going to do, because there's no real-time aspect to this, this is all turn-based. So now I've got my three characters and I've got to figure out what to do with them. Each of them can move and do something, except these two guys right now can't move because they've been webbed up by the relevant bugs. You can see who's webbing them. So we've got to actually either kill or otherwise move these bugs because this game is very much a game of positioning. You see, most of your abilities don't just do damage, they also make bugs move in a particular direction. The artillery is an excellent example of this. So, I'm going to move my artillery. In fact, I'm not sure I even need to bother moving my artillery. My artillery shot basically works like this. I can basically position myself where I want to, though I don't think I actually need to move on this occasion. I can fire any square in any compass direction, with the exception of the one right next to me. And when I actually hit a square, it does one damage, and then makes everyone else who is one space in any direction be shuffled one space further in that direction direction. However, things also collide with other things. So what you're seeing there is, I would launch an artillery shell at that bug I'm currently aiming at. It would take one damage. The bug over here would then be shoved one space over in this direction. This guy would be shoved one space in this direction. However, that would cause this mech to collide with this mech, so they would both take one damage. So arranging for bugs to potentially slam into each other can be very, very good indeed. So in a perfect world, I wouldn't mind putting the shell down here, because then this bug would slam into this bug. However, if I did that, this bug would slam into this here building, and these buildings represent power. If these buildings take damage, then the power grid itself starts going down, and that's your health bar for the entire playthrough, so we really, really don't want that. So what I'm going to do instead is, my artillery moves back one space. It then fires at this bug directly, doing one damage. So what's happening now is the bugs are trying to attack the same space as they were before, except they themselves have moved. So this guy here, who was here, was trying to attack this tank, he's been shoved over here, so now he's going to attack this empty space and do nothing whatsoever. These guys are both going to try and attack this empty space and nothing's going to happen either, which basically just works beautifully for me. However, ideally, I also need to start killing these guys because, yeah, this here, there's more enemies coming in. When I hit end turn, two more enemies are spawning in, so I need to figure out a way to either kill or otherwise damage these bastards. So now the webbing's been removed, these other guys can also move around. My tank, basically, uh, his ability is, he can fire infinite range in any direction again. It does one damage and also pushes him back by one space. Uh, my big mech, however, he can move, I think he can move slightly further, can he move slightly further? No, I think he gets an upgrade to move further pretty quickly. Uh, my mech can also move three spaces, he punches and does two damage, and also pushes back one space at the same time. So now I've got to figure out the best order of things to make these bugs either be killed or potentially attack each other. So say this bug, if I hadn't actually done any damage, I could have pushed this bug back with the tank over here, and then this bug would have attacked his friends. Making the bugs attack each other is a very, very good tactic indeed. Sadly, my tank and my mech can't get around the back of this guy to basically push him in this direction so he gets attacked by this bug. So probably the best thing I can do at the moment would be... Hmm, interesting. What's the best thing to do here? This guy's got three health. This guy can do two damage. However, there's a mountain right here. I'm going to move you to here, activate my big titan punch thing, punch him for two damage, and then he takes a third damage for slamming into that mountain. Yeah, I just punched a bug into a mountain. That's how I killed a bug. This game's pretty bloody awesome. And just for safety, probably the best thing I can do at this point is simply, yeah, move the tank around here and just take one shot at this guy just to basically finish him off. So now there's only one bug left on the field and it's going to do a harmless attack right here. Good starting point, I'd say. End my turn, and now the enemies basically carry out the actions we already knew they were going to do. So he basically attacks an empty space harmlessly. Two new bugs spawn in. He decides he's going to be attacking that building. You're trying to attack that tank, and you're also trying to attack that tank. Okay, this works pretty nicely for me, potentially. So everyone on the field, in terms of a bug, currently has, yeah, three hit points, three hit points two hit points. This guy is relatively more squishy, and these spots are where more enemies are going to be emerging. But here's the interesting thing that I really, really like about this game. Basically, you can stop enemies emerging by standing on the spaces where they emerge, but it does one damage to you. But here's the thing. You can also push enemies onto the space where bugs are about to emerge, and then one, it stops the bug emerging, and two, the bug you're using to block the space also takes the damage. 
which is really, really damn cool. Which is what I'd like to do to this guy, ideally. Uh, what else do we have here? You've got three health, you've got that. What's the best place to put everything here? And what's the right order to move everything in? Okay, I think I've got a plan here. So, I'm going to move my guy onto the blocking space. And then just basically throw a punch at this guy. So that's going to do one damage to him. Sadly, he doesn't slam into the edge of the battlefield. This guy is going to move... Hang on, where are you attacking? You're attacking to... Ah! You're attacking in a straight line. That's going to do some damage to you now. Okay... This guy's about to take some quite serious damage, which could be a concern, but we're just going to have to... Oh, no. Okay, this has all gone horribly wrong, because what I was about to do was punch this guy over here so he blocks this space. But now what's going to happen is, this guy's going to attack this guy, this guy's going to attack this guy, someone's going to try and come up from underneath him, he's going to take three damage and be instantly killed. So that no longer works. So I've got two solutions to this. Either I could try and use my artillery to fix this mess. So my artillery, for example, could actually fix this mess. It could fire a shot right here that would kill this guy, push this mech out of dodge. This guy would still take the damage. So yeah, he's now dead. This guy will still die and also block one bug. However, because I've done that, I'm going to lose one power. So instead, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use my reset turn ability. Once per battle, you get to basically reset time to how it was at the beginning of that turn because we're time travellers and we've got localised breaches or something, something diddly derp de derp So that's very, very useful indeed. So now, this time, let's plan this a little bit better. Because my number one priority should be up here. This bug is about to do some damage to the grid. Damage to the grid is very, very bad indeed. We shouldn't let him do damage to the grid. So this guy, what he should do instead is just naff off over here and punch this bug in the face. There you go. That bug has been punched in the face and now that bug is located in a forest. And conveniently, if a forest takes damage, it catches fire. Anything that then stops in that forest will itself catch fire and start taking one hit point damage per turn, which can be very, very useful indeed. I still want to do this, however. This guy moves over here, and this guy fires here. Ah, that's what this guy does. This guy basically just fires a big horizontal shot that will keep going until it hits something. Gotcha. So as that shot won't actually hit any buildings, probably the best thing I can do here is just come here... Activate this and just drop a single bit of artillery on this guy just to basically finish him off. So he's dead. He's going to be killed. And he's going to stop a new bug showing up at the same time. And this guy is basically just going to waste a shot that's going to do nothing. So end my turn. That was a much better turn. Lovely. So that guy attacks that space. Does nothing. That guy attacks over here. Does nothing. New bugs try and emerge. Those guys do emerge. This guy can't emerge and kills his friend at the same time. Marvellous. Now what's going on over here? These guys fly around and they do look rather nice and clustered, don't they? <laughs> Gotta love it when the bugs are nice and clustered. That's generally very, very good indeed. So these bugs have three hit points, two hit points, two hit points. Now two hit points is very, very useful because it means what we can do here and also keep an eye on the bonus objectives. Yeah, protect the batteries, uh, avoid grid damage. That's fine. So what I want is to move these enemies close together because enemies can indeed clatter into each other, which can be very, very useful indeed. So what I'm going to do is uh, this tank is going to move here and it's going to fire one shot at this guy. This guy now has one actual damage on him. This guy, now what he wants to do is... Hmm, who are you attacking? You're attacking here. What's the best way to make this happen? Yeah, probably you move over here, attack this spot right here, and now both of these guys take one damage for colliding into each other. This guy's still trying to attack this spot, but this spot's not going to be there for much longer, because what I need to do is... Oh... The problem is, yeah, I was kind of planning to get this guy round the side and then punch this guy out of the way, but I can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my mech take one point of damage for the sake of actually avoiding these guys taking damage, because it's better I take damage than the buildings do. So instead, just punch this guy. Lovely. He gets punched back. He's now extremely weak. However, now there's still two aliens on the field, albeit damaged ones. And these three spots are about to spawn aliens. So this is probably about to start getting flipping dicey. So enemy turn. That guy attacks me for one damage. That guy attacks nothing. And thus is a wasted move. In comes... Ah. Okay. It's a flipping Scion. Everyone hates Scion. Scions are bastards. 
So as long as this guy is on the field, it looks like, yeah, everyone basically gets bonus armor, so it takes one less damage versus what they're supposed to be taking. And now everything starts getting a bit nasty. I get victory in one turn, however. The Vex do just basically retreat after a certain period of time. So that's very, very useful indeed. Oh dear. This is this is all getting a bit uh, a bit dicey. Yeah, this here Shell Scion. Uh, passive effect, all other Vex have incoming damage reduced by one. So he really needs to go down first. And he's flying, so sadly I can't just knock him into the water. And these other guys I could knock into the water, which is very, very useful indeed. But this guy, no, because he can just fly over the top of it. Right. I'm kind of sad I've used my reset now. What's the solution here to minimise damage to buildings? Because remember, I win automatically after the bugs take their next move. And if my mechs take damage, they heal up between battles. So I can afford to throw myself in the way of a couple of shots if it actually saves the grit. Oh, this is really complicated. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my artillery here because my main damage dealer is currently all tied up. So I just moved him to the wrong spot. What I should have done is moved him to here... And potentially shot my own guy. I've moved him to Odia and I've used my reset. Right, this is why you double think before everything. Right, how the heck am I going to sort this out? Okay, this is still going to work here. Actually, this might work even better. I'm going to fire at this guy. It's going to do no damage because he's shielded. However, what it's going to do, this guy gets pushed into the water. And that frees my actual main mech, which is very, very useful indeed. This guy is just attacking this space. He's not to be worried about. He's low priority. Either I take this guy and punch this guy down, but then even if he goes down, that doesn't actually do me much good because I still can't kill these guys. Even if they lose their shield, they've still got multiple hit points. The best thing I could probably do at this point is just... Okay. The tank can just push this guy out of the way. It won't be able to kill him, but it'll push him out of the way so he doesn't do grid damage. So that's... Okay, don't, don't take any action until I know what I'm doing with this guy. This guy... What can I do here? Aha! Ha 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 ha! What I can do with this guy is... Move you round to here. Punch this guy. It only does one damage rather than usual two. However, now his friend eats the shot rather than any building. Marvellous. That works for me. And the tank can simply... Do one damage, one damage. Yeah, the tank simply comes over to just here. And fires over here to push that guy out of the way. And once again, everything's safe. You do actually get... Well, actually, I'm not sure. Uh, the game says, oh, you did really well if you kill the bugs. And if you just basically survive to the end and the bugs retreat, the game's like, oh, we shouldn't let them get away. I'm not actually sure, like, what's bad about letting the bugs get away, whether it does actually have any persistent effect. But the game kind of suggests you should be trying to kill the bugs. But this is normal mode. So as a result, everything is hell. So, end of the turn. That guy attacks the mountain, does nothing. That guy attacks his own friend, but no damage gets done because he's still shielded. And the Vec retreat because it's the end of the battle. And I managed to actually get, yeah, all a thousand civilians that live here actually survived. And I got both of the bonuses. So that's actually a pretty good result. So, that region is now secured, and that leaves only the artifact vaults. Yeah, basically, if you want to kind of get to the more advanced stuff over here, you've got to work your way to it one by one and kind of leapfrog over to it. So, the artifact vaults are up next, where we've now actually got incoming tidal waves. Yes, there's actual environmental hazards here. Gotta be careful of those. And also, bonus objectives, kill at least seven enemies, protect the coal plant. Okay, fine. What you notice about this game, by the way, is there's a certain finite number of levels. So, I think, like, the layout of the levels changes slightly, but, like, you'll always find on this green island a, hey, there's a tidal wave coming in, and you've got to protect the coal plant mission. But where the coal plant is, and what enemies spawn in, and where they spawn in, seems to be randomised. So, you get kind of, like, remixed versions of the same levels each playthrough. Anyway, same business as last time, simply lay down my mech, my tank and my artillery. Let's go and see what the opening moves for the bugs is going to be. What's that noise just one of the buildings? Um, don't worry, it's just giant bugs. Ooh, a time pod. Time pods are very, very useful. They basically give you free technology and stuff, assuming the bugs don't decide to... Okay, that was a dick move guy at the top. So, one of the guys at the top has just basically gone into a position that's going to make it very, very hard for me to actually deal with him. Because while I'm allowed to stand on water, I can't attack while I'm on water. So probably the only thing I can really do with him is just push him out of the way. Because he's now in an annoying position. Which one are you, by the way? Because you're one of the Scions. You are, ah, you are indeed a Shell Scion. So you need to be got rid of pretty much as a priority. 
Uh, probably the best thing I can just do with you, because again, you're flying, so I can't push you into the water, is simply send you to here and just punch you straight away. He goes down, they lose their shields. Marvellous. This guy needs to be pushed away. Technically, what I could actually do is I could move my artillery to here, grab the time pod, which contains some, like, you know, cool, unique, special tech, like uh, bonus upgrades and whatever. Then I could actually bomb the space behind this guy, pushing him into the building. But if I did that, that would actually damage the building and cost me grid power. So I don't want to do that. But in an emergency, you absolutely can. Instead, the only thing I can really do to this guy, because I can't kill him because he's got the two hit points, is move you to here and then simply bomb this space to move him out of the way. So now he's just attacking this empty space, and hopefully next time he'll move inland a little bit, and that will be a bit easier. Unfortunately, yeah, now all we've got is the tank. And all the tank can really do is push this guy out of the way, or dive in the way. I don't want to push him, obviously, this way, because then he just hit this building. So all I really need to do is just run down here, and then attack this guy and just fire at him. And now his shot is wasted. It's often worth running forward a little bit. Because if you run forward, the bugs are more likely to try and attack you. And better that they try and attack you than try and attack the cities. Still, that's all I can do for the time being. And the turn. Where are the enemies coming? Uh, in comes the water. That's just going to keep coming in. He attacks that space and hopefully moves somewhere a bit more useful. You attack an empty space as well. No damage done yet. In come more bugs. Up to five bugs on the field. Not liking that. And he moves over there and is going to continue being very bloody annoying to deal with. Okay, this is good. Several bugs seem to be focusing on... Oh, blimey. Okay. So, 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 so. I might need to sacrifice a bit of grid power here. I might just need to do that because this bug is out of the way and annoying. And there's not much I can do about him. And in a perfect world, what I would do would be... Yeah, oh wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The artillery can probably do something to this mess. Uh, but what? What's the right thing to do here? Actually, I think I see it. If the artillery were to move to this spot, and then bomb this spot here, that would push you to block that enemy, and then you would slam into you and do, yeah, that's got to be the right option. So I'm just going to sacrifice this city up here, and then that's going to draw that bug further in. So that's going to do loads of damage to here. This guy, we now just leave alone, because he's going to actually block uh, the guy coming up there, and as a result, take one damage and stop reinforcement showing it, which will give me a brief moment to actually get my bearings. And probably the best thing I can do here is if this guy were to... Oh dear. This guy can't make it to this spot, because this thing's in the way kind of irritatingly. Okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. What's the best way to do this? Because yeah, units can't move past each other. Units do block each other, including friendlies. So... These guys are attacking... Ah, but there's two here. So if I let these guys get their attacks off... Oh, blimey. Um, 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 This is bad. Because while this guy's webbed up, he can't move. And while he's webbed up right now, he's not in a useful position to help out. But if I were to use... Yeah, and this guy can't actually... Oh, dear. We're about to take an absolute flip ton of grid damage, aren't we? Yes. Yes, we are. And how am I going to stop that happening? Should I use my reset turn at this point? I mean, I don't know if I'll actually be able to do anything that's any better. This guy's got two hit points, so this mech can just kill this guy. That's nice and simple. But then this tank's basically got nothing it can do, aside from, yeah, just pushing this guy one space in that direction to free himself, but it doesn't actually help me that much. But it will set up a better turn next time. And I've got to be, yeah, in all fairness, I get bonus stars for... Okay, I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to basically make some sacrifices to the grid here. You die immediately. You're going to take some damage. And that frees me, but that's all I can do. And that means, unfortunately, that's two grid hits. But if I can just protect the coal plant, I will get one grid back at the end of this fight. So, in comes some more tidal waves. Power lost, 117. And, oh, that was lucky. That was flipping lucky. Yes, buildings can sometimes resist, which is what they just did, which is really bloody good. It tells you what the threat of that is up here. So grid 15% resistance. You can get upgrades and bonuses that make that more likely to happen, which is very, very useful indeed. And this is good. These enemies have all clustered together. Clustering together is always a good thing. What are you doing? You're trying to attack me. You're also trying to attack me. However, what I can do is also, who's webbing me right now? 
I could push you right into the water immediately. And victory in one turn. Oh, I'm not going to get the flipping star bonus because I haven't killed enough enemies. Right. The coal plant must survive because I need the grid. So, unfortunately, that means my artillery is once again just going to waste its time just basically shooting that bastard. So, the artillery needs to move over to probably the safest spot is going to be here to fire up to here. But let's not move just yet, just in case I'm about to push any enemies into that sort of a spot. The tank can potentially afford to take a couple of hits if need be. You, however, can't get over to here, which is a bit unfortunate. Yeah, I might have to be willing to just basically let the tank take some hits. Like, I'm very tempted to say, hey, this tank should fire at this guy. He'll fall in the water and instant drown. But if I push this guy out of the way, it'll kill him and guarantee no more grid damage. So I should probably accept that and just kind of say, yeah, actually, prioritize protecting the coal plant, get the time pod... Except a little bit of damage to myself, that's fine. Instead, this guy just fires on this guy. He dies. So this guy is going to do, yeah, damage and damage to me. But actually, the tidal wave might kill him. I'm not sure what happens first, whether it's the tidal wave or his attack. But the tank survives in either case. So don't worry about any of that. You, meanwhile, could move to... Yeah, you just move over to here. Fire your artillery shot into the sea. And push him out of the way so he does not take out the coal plant. So I get the grid back, which is good. So I haven't lost any grid to this fight. And then this guy could punch one of these guys. But it's probably better to go and secure the time pod. Which is just like a pod sent from the future containing unique powers and stuff. So we definitely want to be getting that. And yeah, that will just cause... Yeah, the tank can take the two hits. Pod has been secured. That's fine. And I could do some stuff to myself. Like, you've got a repair option, by the way. So if you want to actually spend your turn uh, basically getting rid of status conditions and also restoring one hit point, you totally can. I haven't had to do so yet. And, yeah, screw it. I'll punch this forest to set it on fire because I'm a bit of a dick like that. End the turn. Now, what happens first? Is it the tide of the waves? Yeah, the tide of the waves happened before the enemy attack. Nice. Very, very good indeed. So that guy takes one damage. But that doesn't really matter. The two vec decide to pull back. Lovely. Mission complete, and more importantly, I got a time pod! And also a bit of power. So the grid's in good shape. Continue, open the door to the time pod, and I get myself a reactor core. Nice, reactor cores are very bloody useful. So now that we've done that, let's actually look at reactor cores, because I've actually got one of them now. Uh, yeah, the corporate reputation we can't spend until the island's been liberated one way or the other. So, uh, basically, this is my main mech, for example. So right now, this mech has one power shoved in it. So I've got one power, and it's committed to powering my Titan Fist, which is very, very useful indeed. However, there's a whole bunch of other stuff I could actually spend it on. Like, for example, if I wanted to, I could have no weapons whatsoever, but I could have plus two health, or plus one move. But I need more power for that. And that's what a power core is. So what I could do is I could press install now. That would basically put an extra bonus power into my reactor, which I could then commit into one of these slots. So if I had two power, for example, I could give myself the dash ability. So charging distance before punching the target. Ah, okay, hang on. So does that mean if I literally just basically move up to an enemy, I punch them automatically? I don't know, I've not used that yet. Or if I'm willing to spend three power, I could do four damage a punch, which would be very, very good indeed. Or I could just give myself some more health or some more moves. I find upgrading your mech's like health and move is very useful because your mech is obviously the guy who's on the front line. So it's very useful to have him be nice and tanky. Though speaking of tanks, let's actually look at the tank. So the tank can also have a bit more move, a bit more health. Uh, I could give my actual cannon, yeah, two damage rather than one, and then up to three damage rather than one, which would be very, very good indeed, but that would require a whole five flipping reactor cores to do. Meanwhile, my artillery can again have health and movement, or I could make, ooh, I could make buildings immune to damage. That'd be nice. And then up to three damage. Ooh, again, very, very nice indeed, but a little bit on the expensive side. Yeah, I'm going to install my first reactor core on this guy. And now I just decide where to put it. Though if you want to, you can just change it around anytime you want. So I will give myself bonus health. So as a result, I've now actually got, yeah, five health together with my Titan Fist, which I think is very, very worth doing. So now I need to start picking where I want to go next. You're probably thinking, well, obviously you want to go to the library. The rewards are much better. Yeah, high threat detected. So you can choose to go to the more dangerous places if you want to. But yeah, bear in mind, though there are good rewards, there's also going to be much tougher enemies floating around. Or you can go to the nice soft places, like the secondary archives here, which has defensive shields active. Which basically means, yeah, the buildings actually have little shields around them, so they're a lot safer. So the chance of the power grid taking any damage is much reduced. If you're in trouble, that can definitely be a good idea. But go on then. 
Let's try and do the library. I need to defend satellite launchers and also protect a coal plant. We've upgraded these old satellites. Should be able to make use of them. With any luck, they'll survive the launch. So, protect a coal plant and also protect two satellites. So, I've got three different things to protect here. This could be a little bit on the difficult side. Uh, let's get you right over here. You over here. And you at the back. Confirm. Okay, that's one of the shield scions. He needs to be punched right flipping now. You've moved over here and ouch. Okay, the game wasn't kidding. Okay, this is this is all very concerning. Uh, okay, so, 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 so. This guy, unfortunately, an alpha hornet, is actually going to be able to damage two buildings in a single swing. So moving him out of the way is a pretty bloody high priority. Luckily, the satellite rocket has two health as opposed to all buildings that only have one. So the satellites can take a bit of a knock if need be. First priority has got to be knocking this guy out of the way. So punch him out of the way, those guys all lose their shields. Now, who can be made to potentially attack who here? Because, 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 because. If I just knock this guy over to here, he will, yeah, that's gotta be the right thing to do. This guy moves over to here and fires to him. So now, this guy is going to attack his friend, assuming, oh, assuming his friend is even still there, which perfect world he probably shouldn't be, because I should probably push him out of the way, because he's about to do flipping loads of damage. Hmm. Okay, I may have just made an error there. Yes. You see, this is why you want to think things through. Also, should I actually reset, or should I save my reset for later? Because I feel like the reset's going to be more important down the line. I mean, no, this is actually a pretty bad starting point now because these buildings are going to go down. This is going to take a knock. More is going to come out. Hang on. Let's just reset. Hang on. Yeah. Reset. <laughs> restart here. Hang on. Just flip and restart for a second. Priority one is to get this guy out of the way. So the artillery should do that by firing here and pulling him back. That strikes me as a good idea. Except the tank is currently in the way. Ah, the tank can cut through this, though. Okay. Probably the best thing we can do to you is... is, 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 is. Okay. First things first, priority one is indeed get the shields down, I'd say. Move the shields down out of the way. This guy comes over here, blocks this thing, which is very, very useful indeed. And, ah, oh, but then... Wait, do you fire in a long line? I think you do. Okay, this guy's got the health to take it. Don't worry about it. Then this comes over here and basically pulls this guy over there. Okay, so we've moved some stuff out the way, but this is looking dicey already, quite frankly. I feel like we're going to lose some stuff here. Okay, protect the coal plant for grid and then protect the satellite launchers if I can. The satellites are okay for the time being. End of the turn, hopefully some of the bugs decide to come for me. I've also sacrificed a point of health to stop reinforcements coming in. I take one point of health, but I can actually take it. That satellite's okay for the time being. Blocking, but take some damage. Okay, this is good. That's really good. He's decided to attack these guys. That means I can just move out of the way. That's not a problem. So what do we flipping have here right now? We've got... Okay, we've got an absolute cocking mess is what we've got. So we've got one guy, no, we've got two guys coming in right now. This tank has only got two health, which means I've got to be careful of that. We've got a whole bunch of guys chilling out here. You're trying to attack these two spacers, don't worry about that. I could in theory, ooh. Hello, satellite rocket. What do we know about you exactly? Launch a satellite into space, destroying the surrounding area. Well, isn't that just interesting? Can, can I do that? Apparently I can't do that. That's a shame. And right now, three different enemies are all pointing at my tank. So I've got to protect the tank. Otherwise, the tank's screwed. Because yeah, he's got someone coming underneath him and three different enemies pointing at him. So the tank has got to be freed and ideally moved. So the artillery probably needs to help doing that. Yeah, if the artillery moves to right here and then bombs... Hang on, what's the right space to bomb here? He can't bomb this space because then this guy will be pushed into the rocket, which would destroy it and also destroy him. So probably he needs to come round to here. Actually, wait. Four turns. This guy's emerged. This guy hasn't. Ooh. 
Is this rocket about to launch and kill those two guys? Because if so, that'd be marvellous. So you, yeah, come over here and then fire at this spot, which basically just gets the webbing off this guy so this guy can now get out the way. This guy could then come round here and environmental stuff ought to happen before the rest of it. So if I just basically move you round here and push you to here, you'll either be killed by fire damage or you'll be killed by the satellite, one or the other. Unfortunately, ah, but if I do that, then, hmm, just make sure I'm not standing in these spaces, because these spaces strike me as dangerous. I kind of need to push this guy out of the way, otherwise this satellite's going to be screwed. Actually, you know what, maybe sacrifice this satellite and just say, this satellite's fine, this is a good satellite, everything's okay. Um, 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 um. what's the right thing to do? You can only get so far, to be honest. Okay. Ooh, yeah, I don't want him to be standing here. So this guy might just have to, like, you know, just hang back and repair and whatever. Yeah, I'm going to sacrifice this satellite. I'm going to move you to here. I'm going to fire you to here. And as a result of that, I'm hoping, well, either the fire will kill you or the satellite will. I'm hoping the satellite will wipe out all of these guys and that will be a great, great victory. However, this guy can't really do much aside from potentially standing out of the way so you probably just want to step out the way at this point and heal yourself and I really hope that what I think is about to happen is about to happen which is this thing's about to launch and these guys are all about to be murdered please please be what's about to happen fire and attack and attack sadly we actually did lose that and, okay, the rocket fires, those guys die. Except, weirdly, that environmental thing happened after, but everything's weird sometimes. Yeah, sometimes environmental stuff happens first, sometimes it happens second, which can be a little bit hard to tell, and it would be better if you kind of could know that for certain. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Two turns to victory, still need just to protect the coal plant. That's fine. Admittedly, I've set fire to the square next to the coal plant, but I'm sure that's not a problem. Okay, you've got two health, you've got three health. This is... Okay. Plan, 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 plan. Fire this at you. Okay, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Where can you move? Because Perfect World, I'd like... Ah. I'd like, ideally, this artillery to fire at this spot, but it physically can't do it, because it can't fire at the space next to it. So... And it can't be here anywhere. Okay. So, rethink that plan, because it's a plan that literally doesn't work. Also, we can't lose the coal plant. Coal plant's too important to lose at this point. Okay. Whew. How am I going to make this all work, then? Uh, I could sacrifice a city. Yeah, I have no way of making the artillery fire at this spot. I can't get you to that spot, either. I could just basically dive in and punch this guy and take the shot myself, because I've got the health for it. But then this city gets screwed. Hmm... <laughs> scorpions. How exactly does scorpions work here? So web the target and prepares to stab it. Fine. So you're just going to stab. So if I literally just push this guy one step back, that would work. Okay, so probably the best thing I can do is basically just say, screw you, get out of the way. So now my tank is free, but hasn't really done much this turn. Okay, okay, okay. What can I flipping do here? Actually, you know what? I could just basically stop stuff from showing up. Or I could fire at... If I fired at this space... Yeah, if I fired at this space here, that would do one damage to you. But, yeah, then he'd hit this city and you'd hit this city. So that's not that useful. But this guy can punch this guy to death. That's fine. That's not a problem at all. Another spot I can't get to is this spot here. Because, yeah, if the artillery could get somewhere where it could fire on this spot, this guy would be pushed over here. Then my robot could move to that spot kill him and then take the shot from this guy but tragically that's not gonna work either oh bloody hell this game okay best thing i can do is you simply move to yeah you simply move to right here and then drop a shot here that pushes this guy back out of the way this guy can come over here punch this guy and then the fire damage will kill him probably before he actually fires i think so you come here and just launch an attack there. I think fire damage will actually kill him before he gets his shot off. That's the best we can do. End of the turn. Enemy turn. Yeah, fire damage kills him. Lovely. He does a pointless shot there. You do a pointless shot here. 
You've got two hit points and two hit points, I believe. In comes some more guys. But because he spawned onto a fiery space, he's immediately on fire, which is very, very bloody useful. Whole bunch of guys chilling out there, which again is quite useful. More scorpions, albeit this time a scorpion on fire trying to deal with this guy. You are probably the lowest priority right now because you're trying to take out artillery. These guys are chilling out next to each other. That could work out very nicely for me. If I just basically drop just, yeah, just drop a thing there... Then, oh, but you've got to move first so you didn't get pushed into the fire. But if I just drop a thing there, both of these guys take one hit point. But one hit point isn't really enough, to be honest. Hmm. Okay. Ignore this guy. This guy's unimportant. This guy basically just needs to, yeah, and basically his shot, if I get out of the way, will just not hit any cities. You just need to basically shoot this guy again. He's on fire and he's also set the forest on fire because he's spread the fire with him. <laughs> Okay, everything's fine. Everything's under control. If you basically just come over here and punch this guy into this guy, that's actually probably a pretty good result, all things considered. So you just punch this guy, and a bunch of damage will be done there. And also, you, my good man, have apparently just leveled up, which is absolutely marvellous. And now I can just basically, yeah, I can just drop an artillery shell on that guy's head, move out of the way of here, just drop the shell right there. Boom, he goes down. Absolutely lovely. You both do hopeless attacks that do nothing. End the turn. And fire damage. Stab that doesn't go anywhere. Attack that doesn't go anywhere. Everything is fine. <laughs> Whew. Right. Oh, I like this game. This is a damn good game. Mission complete. Marvellous. So, because that was a hard mission, I didn't actually get all the bonuses. So, sometimes hard missions are so hard. Also, why doesn't Rain put out the fire? I feel like Rain should put out the fire. Well, I guess maybe it's a big fire. And this guy's been promoted, which is bloody useful. So, he now gets... Ah! Oh, mech plus two hit points is his bonus. Very, very good indeed. So, we've now got a choice of things here. A nice, easy mission for one... Okay, the power grid's currently full, so that means what I should probably do is... Oh, defend the train! I like defend the train. These are fun missions. Yeah, basically I've got a choice between going for one star, but one power if I desperately need a power. But if you can go for double star, go for double star. So, basically, I've got to defend a train that's going to slowly move across the map. These missions are great fun. So, down come my mechs, and there's the train! So this time, the mechs get to move, and immediately after that, the train gets to move. So you move over here, and you're trying to attack the train. Don't attack the train, it's beautiful and old and something. Uh, so yeah, this train is going to move from here to here. So it can't be allowed to collide with any bugs, and also the bugs can't attack it. I get two bonus stars if the train manages over its turns to actually get to the far side of the map. Uh, if, however, the train takes damage, then I get one star if I can stop it taking any more damage. Because the first attack derails it, the second attack actually destroys it. So, I get kind of one star regardless. Now I've got to figure out how exactly to take care of this in the perfect world. Okay, I think I see one good move, but I can't do it right now because this bastard's in the way. If I could get my artillery over to here, then I could drop a shell here, that would push this bug over to here. His attack would do nothing, and this guy's attack would hit his own friend in the back, which would just be flipping perfect. However, to do that, I need to get this guy out of the way. Uh, I can do that, however, by basically going, yeah, if I just push him out of the way with a tank, but the tank needs to be over here. No, the tank can't be over here. Because, no, but I'm going to kill him before this. Okay, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a go. So that releases this guy. This guy can indeed move over here, which is exactly what I want to do. But the game's now warning me the train's about to collide with that bastard. I now come over here, drop the shell right here. He heads over here. That's all absolutely fine. This guy, yeah, actually, I'm going to bring this guy. Now he's got absolutely all the hit points in the world. I'm going to come here, smash this, punch you. Everything is lovely. So... I really hope these guys attack before the train moves. I really hope that's the case, because, yeah, the only problem with this game is sometimes it's hard to figure out what the order's going to actually be. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. It literally has an attack order up there to tell you. So if you're unsure whether, like, environmental or NPC happens first, there's literally... This game is perfect. This is a perfect game. The only criticism I can find about it, and the solution is on screen right now. So, this all works for me, and with my new super ridiculously tanky 7 hit point mech, I can basically afford to just be standing to block reinforcements indefinitely. So, the enemies attack. You actually do damage that guy. Oh, and you set him on fire too. I didn't even realise that was about to happen. That's even flipping better. The train moves forward. 
Uh, I have blocked an enemy. Those enemies now pick up the shield icon. That guy goes over there, but... Okay, he's also just standing in the way of the train. Okay, we've got more Vec digging up here. So attack order. Fire damage happens first, but... Does the shield block fire damage? I don't... Hang on. Hang on. Does the shield block fire damage? That's incoming weapon damage. It doesn't mention fire or status, but... I don't know. It might... Well, as long as this guy dies this turn, then I can be pretty confident this guy is going to die from the fire damage before he gets to attack, which is fine. But I can't just move this guy to here and attack because he would be pushed into the artillery. So the artillery needs to move as well. This here is a firefly. What's your ability? That's a volatile mass of goo. So he's going to fire in a straight line forever. So what I'd need to do ideally would be push you onto a safe angle. Though actually, you're already on a pretty good angle here. Yeah, probably at this point I should prioritise just basically blocking the reinforcements. If I block the reinforcements, that actually works pretty well for me. So, I'm just going to basically move my artillery right to here. He can take the hit. This guy is going to come over to here. And this guy is just going to immediately punch this guy. So, he immediately goes down. At this point, you're going to attack that guy... Which is probably fine, to be honest. I don't mind you taking a knock. And then, what does the tank want to do? What the tank should probably do is just simply block the reinforcements. <laughs> Again, just basically just do more reinforcement blocking, because that will just keep the train safer. Yeah, that's fine. Just basically... Actually, no, hang on. Uh, have you taken any... No, none of these guys have taken damage, so I can't actually do a repair action. Is there anything worth doing with these guys? Actually, just for safe. Can I? No, because that would actually do damage to the building. So I don't want to be doing that. Yeah, in that case, just leave it. And this guy can't do anything useful either. Yeah, end the turn. That's fine. So I'm going to take two points of damage to blocking. He takes the fire damage. You get one point of health in against this guy. Only one reinforcement is actually allowed to show up. Which is great fun. So as a result, you're trying to attack the artillery. And you're trying to attack the tank. Okay, this is fine, because neither of you have webbing. I think we're going to get both the bonus objectives here, which is very, very good indeed. Uh, okay, big mechy lad, what do we want to do with you at this exact moment in time? Because I've got a plan. I'm going to move my tank back over here. And I'm going to move you over to here. And then I'm going to... Oh, flip. Okay, I've already, I've already ruined the plan. I've already completely cocking ruined the plan. Oh, darn it. No, the plan wasn't going to... Okay, hang on, reset the... I'm going to do this once per battle. Have I already done that? Did I do that? I... Wait, when did I do that? Apparently I did that. Oh, wait, you actually need to take an action first. Yes, fine. Uh, yeah, I've got this wrong. I've got this wrong because I was planning to push this guy over here for a punch or whatever. Yeah, now reset the turn. Reset the turn, lovely. Uh, there we go. Because what I want to do is have these guys lined up so I can get a big punch against them. But in order to do that, oh, what's the best way to arrange that? Because the artillery can't fire on the space next to it and can't fire out of water. Oh, uh, wait, I know exactly how to do this potentially. Okay, okay, no, it's fine. It's fine, which is, okay. This guy needs to move to here. Okay, he fires a shot at... That still doesn't work! <laughs> I'm so bad at this game. Oh, wait, no. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Fine. I can fire that to here. That pushes this guy to here. The tank needs to be out of the way. But then, where does the tank need to be? That's going to do three damage. Yeah, the tank needs to move to this spot, but not do anything yet. Okay. Now, you fire to here. That pushes this guy. You move over to here and punch this guy. That will do two damage. Bonus damage all around. You're now attacking this guy, which is actually fine. In fact, you know what? I'll leave it. Because if I fire with this guy now, it'll push him back over here and he'll destroy the train. So don't do that. Simply end the turn. Uh, you may as well actually, while you've got nothing to do, you may as well heal up. Yep, yeah, there you go. Repair. End turn. He gets one hitting on my mech. My mech has got all the health in the world. Uh, the train moves on. I get my double star. Nice. I can't believe it. We're all okay. The Riftwalks are heroes. We are as well. Big damn heroes. So that's pretty perfect. We defended the train and not a single civilian went down. But now things get interesting because you're not allowed to do the entire island. 
After you've done a certain number, seismic activity happens, three regions just get lost, the Vec just win, and then you move into the final boss, the corporate headquarters, where there's a big nasty thing waiting for you. And yeah, you're going to be wanting to have as much grid power as possible, because this is where this gets nasty. <laughs> So I've got to destroy the Scion Abomination and protect the Corporate Tower. And some kind of Vec Abomination is approaching our headquarters. I've never fought this one before. Bosses are also kind of randomised, so I've not run into this guy. <laughs> oh dear. I imagine he's going to be passing on one hell of a buff. In fact, can we actually see what you are right now? Scion Abomination. He has five hit points. Hive Leader. Uh, yep, very powerful find. So, all other Vex gain plus one hit point, regeneration... And explode on death. Right. So as long as he's alive, anything else that dies explodes and gets bonus health and also regenerates. So basically, he needs to go down like flipping now. That is a priority. He needs to go down. Gotcha. And we've also got to protect this corporate tower. Because if that goes down, that could... Well, one, it's a grid hit. And two, I don't get a star. And I want stars because stars buy new weapons. As soon as the silence liberates it anyway. Okay. You're moving over here. And... Ah! You can't attack. Okay. Intriguing. Uh, so we've got you guys immediately attacking the corporate tower. Unfortunately, with these guys having bonus health, it's going to be harder to... Oh. Oh, this is a nightmare. Right. I need to be pushing some of these guys out of the way. Sadly, this tank can't quite make it onto this spot, which is a shame. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, best thing I could do would be, well, perfect world, I'd push this guy to here. But I don't think there's any way to make that happen. No, because even if the artillery charges forward, it would need to get the shot in here. So if I'd actually laid my artillery on the front line, I could have made that happen. But unfortunately, I did not. You need to be pushed out of the way... Because we need to save the grid as far as we can. That's got to be the right starting point. Because there's physically no way for the tank to attack that guy. So let's just have you attack a mountain. He's going to be regenerating, however. So we've got to be prioritising and laying down some fire on this thing. Sadly, there's nothing to punch him into. So just punch him there. He's down to three hit points. Now, I could save the corporate tower... Right now, in fact, I kind of have to. Yeah, probably the best thing I can do at this point is just move the artillery to here, lay down the shell there, and just push him in this direction. Uh, which isn't optimal, but it's going to have to do. I'd like to push him the other way, but sadly I can't. So shell goes there, he attacks the mountain. So right now we've got two guys attacking mountains, but until this guy's dead, we're kind of screwed, because these guys have got regeneration and everything. So yeah, he's just regenerating, goes for the mountain. He fires at the mountain too, and two new guys emerge, but we have to kill that thing. I think we need to kill it this turn. Uh, you're going for that guy. That's kind of a problem. Get away from the windows! I'm not sure that's going to help you. Okay, we're just going to need to sacrifice the grid here. Um, that grid's going to have to be sacrificed. My priority for this turn is kill you and somehow deal with you. Now what I can do is, ah, you have enough health that if I was to, yeah, a single punch will kill him. Because it's two plus one for impact with tank, which I'm willing to take. So you just punch this guy. Okay, the Scion Abomination is dead. So whatever happens now, as long as I actually win and survive, I do actually get one star. Next up, the corporate tower needs to be saved. If I could... Da, 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 da. Okay, we've got one reinforcement coming in. If I was to actually fire at this guy, that would cause one damage to you, plus an additional damage for colliding, and he'd take one damage from the collision too, but you'd both still be alive with one hit point. It's arguably not the most important thing in the world. I'm just going to sacrifice that one building, because these guys aren't that strong. And instead... If what I do then is... Okay. You're about to do, I think, just one damage to that guy. I could basically just say, screw it. Let that guy take a knock. That's fine. This guy's got three. Three hit points. Um, How am I going to clear you out? I mean, perfect world I've made collide with me. There's nothing to collide with. Okay. Possibly the best thing to do is... Yeah, you could move here... Hit this guy and also hit him into a mountain. But then he'd have one hit point and... Yeah, that would stop a reinforcement coming in. Which would be good, but then this guy would be really vulnerable. Which would be a concern. 
And we'd still lose the grid power there, but it would at least stop the reinforcement coming in. Yeah, actually, that would mean this guy would have two hit points. This guy would only have one, whereas if I just find now, it'd be one and one. But it does stop the reinforcements coming in. And I feel like I just need a moment to stabilize now. So that's probably not a bad idea at all, because this guy's about to fire into the mountain. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fire you into that mountain. The mountain gets destroyed. You're down to one hit point. You're about to do a point of grid damage. I'm just going to have to deal with that. You're going to do a point of damage to this guy. I'm just going to have to deal with that as well. You should probably just be, again, fired right to here just to push that guy off. That just buys me time. I'm just buying time right now. He gets pushed off. That mountain's about to be destroyed. And this place is on fire. Okay. I'm just going to have to accept that. So... We lose a grid. We take one hit point damage on the mech. But quite frankly, that's the mech's job. The mech's got all the hit points. That's fine. We've lost a tiny bit of power and some civilians. That's okay. And we've managed to actually block that. But you're in trouble. And I think they smell that I'm in trouble because they are moving over to deal with the tank. Yeah. Yeah, actually, they're totally focusing on the tank right now. The tank can repair itself, of course, if need be. Right, 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 right. What are we going to do here at this point? Actually, there's a bunch of them clustered together, which kind of works. So if I could basically just drop... You've got three hit points. You've got two. I could murder you with a single punch right now. Both of you are looking over here. You've got three. You've got one. So a single shot from anything will finish you off. But the artillery needs to just keep pushing this guy off the corporate headquarters. This guy can afford to take a knock if need be. And also we can just move out the way of this guy. You, if I could... Ah, sadly, I can't get round to the back of him. If I could get this guy round to here, this would be the perfect place to launch a Titan Punch. Then that's two damage, plus one to kill, plus one damage to this guy, who's kind of hopeless. But... Hmm. If I was to drop fire on this guy... He takes one damage. This guy's pushed... Yeah, that's the answer. That's the answer right there. And if it's not, I'll just reset time. Uh, drop firepower on here. My tank gets pushed out of dodge and is now safe for the time being. You just took damage there. So you're down to one. You're one, but not threatening anything. You're one, not really threatening anything. In fact, actually, what's the order? Uh, enemy actions. Ah, before the enemy spawn. Sadly, it would be hilarious if the enemies emerged and immediately got attacked by their friends. But that's not how it's going to go. You need to be got out of the way because I need this guy to not kill the corporate headquarters. So, how am I going to make that happen? Ooh, I'll tell you how I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to make that happen by you coming to here because then you get one damage and then both of these guys die immediately. Boom. That's both of you dead. Nice. Very, very well done indeed. And then this guy can come over here, set himself on fire, but that's, that's just fine. You've got enough hit points to be on fire. Two damage, badly damaged, and does more damage to Mountain. That's probably not a bad result. More enemies coming in, but this guy is slowly running out of health, because now he's going to take fire damage every turn to I repair him to get rid of the burning status. So I've got to be a bit careful here. Okay, those are two light enemies with only two hit points to go. That's fine. So where are you guys going? You're attacking... Ah... They smell blood, that's the thing, I like the AI. The AI generally seems to like detect weak units and try and go for them. So now they're crowding on this guy because they think they've got a chance against him. What I should probably do is... Okay. Perfect world, you just go and push this guy out of the way. You could actually... Actually, you could kill this guy right now. You could kill that guy immediately, which would be very, very useful indeed. Uh, or you could move over here. Ah, but if you attack that guy, his corpse will knock down the tower. So don't do that. Instead, you get round... I could just hit this guy. That would do one damage. He'd be killed by the impact. He'd be down to one hit point, which means anything would finish him off. Yeah, I'm just going to take that and we'll see how it goes. So that kills you. You both go down from the impacts. Nice. Okay, good. So actually, sorry, I forgot that he also took the impact. So those guys are both dead. You're on fire, but that's absolutely fine, because uh, you can just kill this guy. I'd like to be able to kill this guy uh, over at the top, but sadly, we're just going to have to push him off. So just move you over here, drop fire, and you can just destroy the mountains. I'm sorry for all the mountains, by the way. <laughs> There's been a lot of dead mountains. So he takes fire damage, but survives. You attack the mountain. Everything's fine. He retreats. We're saved. We've won. You scared them off. They're on the run. Yay. Mission complete. And that is that island liberated. Nice. 
And with the abomination destroyed, no new hive should appear on this island. You've saved us! Bum ba 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 bum. Lovely. So everyone gets loads of XP and so forth. Very, very nice indeed. So yeah, you are experienced. You get bonus XP every time you get a kill, and your mech has bonus hit points. You have not got enough XP yet to have leveled up, and neither of you, because obviously these guys get less kills. So this guy's going to level up faster, because in all fairness, leveling up faster is sort of his thing. Now, to the shop. Because I've got six reputation points, I can actually spend at the shop at this point, which is very, very nice indeed. So right now I've got, yeah, three pilots and my three weapons. I can sell those if I want to for more reputation in order to buy more new stuff. What do we have here, however? So, a new weapon for my artillery frees yourself and the targets. Okay, why would I want to freeze myself? Also, it requires two power to fire. Okay, that's a no. Sorry. This thing's on sale, so it's cheaper than it would be normally. Acid projector for a science class weapon. I don't have a science class ship with me. I've got a tank, a prime, and a... What's the other one? Ranged. Ranged is the other one. Uh, but yeah, the fourth class, which I'm not using, is the science class. So fires a projectile, applies acid, which I assume does damage over time. I'm not sure. I've never used it before. And pushes, but I can't use that. A uh, shield array. Again, science class. Okay, I feel like this is a bad selection of things for me. And a heavy rocket. Ooh. Hello. So, brute class weapon. So, the brute class is the tank, by the looks of it. So, fires a projectile that heavily damages a target and pushes adjacent tiles. Now, that's useful. That's very useful. A big hit and also a push. Yeah. You know what? I think we're going to have that. I think we will have that indeed. And that also requires one power by default, which is on the right there. So some of these weapons are like freebies. Some of them require tons of power to actually be able to use. So what I should probably do is... Yeah. I could have that for two reputation points. In order to power it, I could buy a reactor core for three reputation points. And then if I want to fix up the grid, I can spend one on that. So that's probably a good idea. I'm going to buy myself that... I'm going to buy myself one of these. I'm going to buy myself grid power to max out the grid. Now, I could if I wanted to actually uh, sell my old weapon, but every craft is allowed to have two weapons, so I'm pretty happy with that. So, over to the tank. You are now my secondary weapon. It is not currently powered. Install my bonus react core and power it. So, there we go. I have now got myself a heavy rocket for three damage. That's nice. Like, that's worth it just for the damage output, quite frankly. So, that's all my reputation. In which case, leave the island. And now I can choose which island to go to next. If you've beaten an island before, by the way, in any playthrough, you're allowed to actually go to it in any order. So, I've done the desert before. I've never actually been to the snow one. <laughs> So I don't actually know what it's about. I'm going to go to desert because I actually know what's going on in desert, which is fine. So, into the desert. Hello there, you're the CEO of this particular corporate island. Lovely. And straight away we're into more choices. Do I want to get myself, yeah, a bit of power and also a star? Would I like to go for the safe option and just take a star? Or do I want to actually go for the more dangerous one? Yeah, let's go for the more dangerous one. So, defend the prototype Renfield Bombs. Okay, this site holds two warheads designed by temporal physicist Dr. Renfield, utilising your breach technology. RST was deemed the safest place to test them. Lovely. So, I would get bonus stars if I protect the bombs, but I'm guessing I can also blow up the bombs if I want to. Hang on. Prototype bomb. Explodes on death, dealing one damage to adjacent tasks. Fine. So, if I want to, I can blow up the bombs in order to actually cause a big explosion. That could be very, very helpful indeed. But I should probably try and not do that if I can avoid it. Yes, that would probably be for the best. So, you go here, you go here, and artillery nice and safe at the back. Confirm and carry on. Lovely. Dad, look, yo, somebody. <laughs> oh, Timmy, probably just step away from the windows. And we've got a time pod. I love a time pod. Lovely. And we've also got new bugs coming in here, because the bugs are randomly shuffled to determine which bug shows up in which world. So, hello, you're new. You are a leaper. What's your deal? You can move four, webs the targets, prepares to bite it, does three damage. Okay, the thing about these guys is they can only attack the space next to them, but they do enough damage to one-shot my artillery or my tank. So we've got to be very, very careful of you. But that also opens up opportunities, because standing close by to him are enemies that only have three-odd hit points. So as a result, if we just push him in the right direction, he could basically be one-shotting our enemies for us. Also, he's only got one hit point. Right, that's a nice twist. 
Now, I know this is what they literally just told us what not to do, but I feel like it's too awesome to not do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my tank right over to here, and I'm going to use my standard pushing shot to push him into that. That's going to cause the bomb to explode. And as a result, yes, indeed, that's done a bit of damage to these bastards. And also, I'm blocking this reinforcement from showing up. The thing about deserts, by the way, is these sand tiles, if damage is done to anything on those, they become smoke tiles. Anyone standing in smoke cannot attack. So right now, this guy is going to attack his friend, which works very, very nicely indeed. But of course, I could also... Ooh. Hmm... Alternatively, yeah, probably the safest thing for me to actually do, this is actually a really nice starting point, is uh, fire there, you go in the water and drown immediately, for teach it to attack a water-dominated planet, marvellous. And now you are actually down to one hit point, so now we can just basically push you straight away by just giving you a good old punch. And I know we've lost a bomb, but we can save the other one for one star. Right, enemy turn, everything's already dead and we've blocked one of the reinforcements. In comes something I've not seen before, a digger. Right, so I'm guessing your deal is you get to actually produce mountains then. Got it, let's just actually get some information about you. Create a defensive rock wall before attacking adjacent tiles. Okay, intriguing. So that does one damage. Okay, ah. And can also basically attack everything around it. So we've got to take you out before you attack literally everything around you. Which will include one city. Now are you standing on... No, you're not standing on a sand tile right now. Which is kind of unfortunate. And there's three reinforcements that want to be coming in. Ooh. There's a lot of reinforcements that want to be coming in actually. So what I've got to do to this guy is two hit points damage without just pushing him back. I can't punch him. Because if I punch him, that destroys the city regardless. So, I've got a plan. I need to move this bomb out of the way. Because if I move this bomb out of the way, and I also move this guy out of the way, then this guy could step onto this space and fire his new super awesome mega cannon. Yeah, there we are. Ah, it can only be used once. Fine, I thought that seemed a bit powerful to just be used as much as I wanted to. Fine, it can only be used once, but it absolutely would make sense to use right now. So, 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 so. What do I need to do? I need the bomb to go out the way. So that's fine. The bomb can simply be moved to, if I just move to, if I move to here, but I don't want to push the bomb into this thing in case that causes damage to that. So I don't want to shoot this space or any of the, oh bloody hell, this gets confusing very quickly. You know what? I'm just going to get this guy to go and get the time pod right the hell now. Good. The time pod has been acquired. Now I'm going to shell my own guy. Because screw it, why not, eh? Uh, so yeah, now I'm just going to fire on my own guy. That's going to push the time pod. Uh, no, not the time pod. The thing that's not the time pod. And having done all of that, this guy should now have a clean shot at this thing. And kabloom. And you literally push those fake mountains out of the way. Right, so those are boulders. They actually have health. Marvellous. So well done. Well done, you. And I think you just leveled up, didn't you? Yep, your mech just gained an extra two hit points because you just leveled up. Very, very nice indeed. Good. Good, 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 good. So, protect this bomb. End the turn. And, sorry, who still has an action, technically? Ah, you still have an action. I'm not sure there's anything we can... Ah, yes, there is. We can heal. You may as well flip and heal up. Definitely heal up if you have the opportunity to. Thank you for the reminder, game. Right, so now, fortunately, I've just accidentally blocked this spot. <laughs> Which is very, very useful indeed. And we've got one of the terrifying locust creatures that's tried to string me up. Fine. You've come over here. Right. Who's attacking what right now? You do a long range fling that does... Oh, wow. You do a load of damage. Alpha Scarab. So, yeah. Three damage at range. But if I just move out of the way, that does nothing. Uh, actually... Alternative, alternative, alternative. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, kind of been noticed two of the bugs are both standing by water. Which could be very, very useful indeed. Because if I fire my own artillery shots right here, that actually pushes him into the water. But actually, if I fire it at my own guy, he goes in the water, you get pushed further away. Yeah, that's better. So, take a bit of damage myself, but he dies immediately. You now do nothing this turn. And actually, everyone's now in actually basically the perfect position to wrap all this up really fast. So, you can come over here. And basically just punch this guy. He goes in the water. You can come over here and just shoot this guy. He goes in the water. Ah. Oh. 
cleared them out. Nice. And actually, I've just got the achievement Watery Grave for killing enough enemies in a single battle. So I've just earned a coin I can spend unlocking new mechs, which is just flipping beautiful. So, out come these guys, including, ah, a new type of Scion. What are you gifting those guys? Blast Scion. Ah, so all other Vex now explode on death until you're actually dead. Except, that's not always a bad thing. That potentially could work very much in my favour. And also, let's just kind of consider this, because if I could clear out every single bug, that would be marvellous. So, a single push will get this guy into the water. This guy can't be got into the water. This guy could be one-shot. In fact, both of these guys could be one-shot by my mech. So... Okay, 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 But, in all fairness, I might be able to use the explosion to my advantage. Sadly, I can't just move my mech here and punch. One, I can't get there, and two, that's smoky, so it wouldn't actually work. Okay, I feel like the first thing to do is just basically put that guy in the water. So that's a free kill against that guy. He's now in the water. You can be- ah, you're flying. Ah, I might not be able to do it, unfortunately. I'm not sure I can actually kill literally everybody, which is a very real shame, but no matter. Uh, right, so, you come over here, eat this shot, fire at this guy and push him into the smoke. Because he's in the smoke, he can't actually attack anymore. You can come over here and just punch this guy to death so this guy doesn't explode. His benefit's gone. That's the end of the turn. Maybe I could have found a way to kill all those guys, but screw it. He retreats. Nothing was damaged. The Riftwalkers are heroes we are. We are big damn robot heroes. And as a result, I get myself, well, I get myself one star, unfortunately. She's not best thrilled with me, but at least all the civilians survived. And two people got promoted there, and I got a time pod, which is really, really good. So what have we got there? Ooh, a new ranged class weapon. However, it requires power to use, so unfortunately, I won't be able to use it just yet, unless I'm willing to swap it out. Fires a pushing artillery and creates smoke behind the shooter. Ah! Create smoke. So I could move, create smoke behind me from whichever way I'm firing, do two damage and push back. It's kind of tempting. And actually get a reactor core as well. Okay, and also you got yourself, yeah, you got yourself two hit points. You did two. Nice, everyone's got five hit points. Lovely. So your new ability right over here. So I could turn this one off or oh, screw it. Let's just power it up here. So install that. Power that up. Job done. So now I've got both of those weapons. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. The scar. What is the scar? Block Vex spawning three times. Protect the coal plant. Anything else? Nope. That's about your lot. Fine. Let's get in there and see if we can do something. Actually, let's see if there's anything more. Is there anything interesting? That's a nice easy one. I'll be it. There's lightning storms. That's seismic activity. Okay. Let's move over to... As these all about the same. Yeah, let's see seismic activity in action. And bear in mind, if I keep the coal plant safe, I basically get a free power at the end of this. I don't think you can actually go... Also, it's not called an earthquake anymore. It's called a cataclysm. That seems worse somehow. So fire damage, then environment, then enemy actions, then enemies emerge. Good. I like the attack order. That's very useful. Uh, right, you get over here. You get over here and you stay at the back. Lovely. So, down we go. The mechs are here! Huzzah! Etc, etc. So, time to make some vet corpses. And you, my good man, come over here. Right, you're just trying to shell that place. You're trying to shell that place. And you're trying to attack that place. So, immediately, all of them are going for buildings. Which is a little bit on the concerning side. Right, your new ability, which can be used... Oh, it's not one use only. I can use as much as I want. Good, that's just more damage. So for one to I can lay quite a bit of damage. But it's only on one guy. But actually, it was always only one guy. It's just now it only pushes back one guy. Though actually, look at this. Cataclysm. So that will presumably kill whoever's standing on it. So if I was just to push you back right now by one step, your shot would do nothing. And as an additional bonus, you'd die as well. Okay, I think I see how to make this work. You can simply fire right now. That's a... Yeah, that's damage and pushed around. Yeah, just the standard shot. He's now blocking one of his friends from emerging. And he's no longer attacking that city. You potentially... Ah, you could be killed by one. Okay, in which case, you fire your new shot here. And that pushes him one step in that direction. And you come over here and simply punish this guy, and he goes straight down. And now, you're going to take damage and block one of your friends. You're going to die. That is a good move right there. So, in comes the Cataclysm. And bye-bye, loser. Marvellous. 
He fires and misses because I've pushed him out of the way. We get a bonus in. Oh, this is good. This is looking very, very good indeed to me. So you're now coming over there. But you've only got two hit points left. Lots of these guys. Oh, three. Oh. Okay. Four guys are trying to spawn in. If I could stop that, that'd be marvellous. And you, yeah, you're a blast scion. Generally, only one type of scion shows up. Okay. I could fire a single basic tank shot from here to push you over to here. Meaning you will die next turn and also you'll block one of the reinforcements. Which strikes me as the most sensible thing to do. Uh, where are you attacking? You're attacking over there, which isn't actually that important. So, ah, but... Okay, the moment this goes down, because I don't have any flyers, I'll be trapped this side of the cataclysm. Which might cause problems. <laughs> we'll have to see about that, but I'm just going to commit to being... Oh, but... No, this guy should probably run over there, but then if he punches that guy, he's going to... Ooh, ooh, okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Where else could you go? This guy, because he's the punchy guy, needs to be the far side of the Cataclysm, because that's where the enemies are showing up. Uh, and sadly, he can't actually get onto the Cataclysm spaces. You need to... Okay, you could do two damage. You could do two damage, but it would push them. So I don't need to push him, because you'll push them into the city. But actually... No, we can just have a freebie. This is fine. I'm just going to use this as my freebie... Because, uh, yeah, actually, I'm going to get one bonus power back. So I'm going to kill you, and that's going to actually cause some damage. Sorry, civilians! That, wait, did that just cause... Okay, that just caused two. Sorry, apparently smashing giant bugs into it causes two, not one. That's a shame. And you need to basically get over here and be ready to deal with all of this. So get over here. That's fine. And anything you can do? No, because there's no point you repairing up. Uh, just end the turn. Right. Up come three enemies. And also that guy's now going to die. Uh, because he's going to be hit by his own friends from below. So that's one of the guys who throws up boulders. Lovely. And the tank needs to get out of the way at some point. Because he's now, yep, throwing up all sorts of stuff here. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. And we know where the cataclysm's going to be. Right. If I punch you, that should do a lot of damage to you guys. You've got all the health in the world. He's about to attack his own boulders and this guy. No city is under threat. This guy can take it. So don't necessarily just panic because this guy can totally take it. This guy's a concern because he is about to try and take out an actual city. So what I probably want to try and do here is... Actually, I know exactly what I want to do. One, I want to drop a standard shot on this guy because that's going to do all the damage in the world because all of you are going to start slamming into each other. That's just flipping marvellous right there. And now, if I just punch you, that will kill you and the collision will kill that guy as well. Very, very nice. John, you're getting good at this. I am. Thank you very, very much indeed. I've been playing a lot of this. It's a very good game. Now, this guy still gets a hit in on me, but that's fine, to be honest. Um, actually, no. I can kill him. You know how I can kill him? By shooting my own mech. That will now kill him. Screw you. So, <laughs> don't know if that's a good idea or not. But you can shoot your own guys. Pretend to give up. I forgot that was a thing. Okay. Its pilot was killed. It won't be able to act for the rest of the mission. I feel bad about that. Because I forgot about the cataclysm. That's kind of unfortunate. Oh, well. Uh, and I've also lost a star, because that was... Can I... Oh, no, I can't reset, because that was between turns, so I can't revert time. Oh, well. <laughs> right, well, this has all gone horribly wrong immediately. And you, oh, dear. This isn't good either, because there's nothing you can do to that guy. Aside from... Push him into... No, you can push him into yourself. Yeah, that's way better. Right, push him into yourself. That kills him, because he's a glass cannon. I can punish this guy and murder him. You're just going to do... Oh, you're going to do three damage too. Oh, this is... Right, well, this is... Okay, this was all going right till it went wrong. Okay, just punch this guy. You will survive this hit. Just. Flipping just. And then the... Hope the coal plants are about to fall into a chasm. That would be unfortunate. Right, end the turn there. Fortunately, I do get the mech back. It's just I lose the pilot and his benefits, so the mech will be worse. Yes, I know damage readouts are bad, but you survived. You would have survived much more easily if I hadn't thrown my own bloody tank away.
Though on the plus side, he actually managed to reach his max level, so he now gets plus three defense. So now, as a result, uh, yeah, buildings, when they're hit, have an 18 rather than 15% chance of just resisting damage. Lovely. You sadly died, but you were a robot, so I'm not sure whether you actually died or not. So, who's piloting this thing now? Uh, nobody. Mechs can pilot themselves, it's better to have a specialised pilot. Okay, so basically now it's just being piloted by an AI who's got no actual benefit. So I need to basically find a time pod in order to get a new pilot, because sometimes pilots come out of time pods, they send pilots back in time to help out, which would be very, very bloody useful, because right now, yeah, this guy basically, experience isn't doing him any benefit whatsoever. He can still move and fight and whatever, but yeah, as a result, he's just kind of stuck without the benefits that pilots give you, because this guy's already got plus two mech health, which is really useful, and this guy did, then I like, you know, killed him or whatever. So the AI is not necessarily going to be that useful. And over here in this new mission, the one with the nice convenient shields, we do indeed have, yes, shields here, but also lightning. So now, lightning will strike four spaces seemingly at random every turn, killing any unit on the marked tiles. Which obviously is, ooh, conveniently this tile right bloody here. And hang on, attack order. Environment happens before your attack, so ignore this guy. He's about to be struck by bloody lightning. Which very conveniently means I can just basically move this guy up here, punch you off into the water. Very, very good indeed. You're trying to attack, hang on, you're attacking, you're attacking that spot, which is actually completely useless and pointless. Sadly, I don't think, actually, I probably could push you into the, ooh. I probably actually could push you into lightning if I really wanted to. I'd need to move, yeah, I'd need to move you to there, and then, can I make this happen? Can I actually make this happen? I don't think I can, unfortunately. Boo! Boo! Because no one's going to be in position to push this guy in this direction, because the only lightning he might be able to get into would be here. So, I can push him one space in that direction, but no, tragically, the only space this guy might be able to get to is occupied by this guy. So that's a real shame. But what I can do, however, is push him back enough with the tank and the artillery so that he will actually block one of the reinforcements and very conveniently also die in the process. And by the way, you're about to be struck by lightning. So have fun with this. In comes some lightning, 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 and the best lightning, zap! Ah, hilarious. You fire at an empty space and they get immediately murdered by your own emerging friends and now there's only one of those bastards to actually take out two. Oh, absolutely marvellous. Oh! And very conveniently, you've decided to actually stand on the lightning. How much damage does lightning actually do? Killing any unit guaranteed. Well, is it life just good? But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I think you get the point. This here is into the breach. It is... Probably not as good as FTL, but only because FTL is one of the finest games ever created and I love FTL with all my heart, but it is really, really, really damn good. This comes out tomorrow, you're gonna want it. All right, just, just go. Link in the description below. Like, it is maybe not quite FTL, but very close to it. And quite frankly, being very close to one of the finest games ever created is ridiculously high praise. This will end up on my top games of the year. Absolutely no question of that whatsoever. Fantastic game, thoroughly, thoroughly recommended. And I suspect you'll be seeing this again, quite possibly in this weekend's live stream, in fact. I might well just have to uh, do a live stream of this because I want to be showing off more of this. I want to play more of this and I want to try, oh no. I want to try hard mode. I'm going to regret saying that out loud. I want to try hard mode, damn it. <laughs> Ooh, oh, flipping lovely. Flipping, flipping lovely. And tragically, I don't have quite enough coins to actually unlock a new squad at this point, but I do have the ability, if I wanted to, to actually customise my squad, show you some of the stuff I've also unlocked. So yeah, as an alternative to my actual cannon mech, uh, I do actually have this here jet mech. Uh, I've also got, yeah, a rocket mech and a pulse mech. It's a little looksy at them. So the jet mech basically yeah, can jump over the top of enemies and drop a bomb down on them that does one damage and also drops smoke on them, which can be very, very useful indeed because smoke stops all attacks. This rocket mech is an alternative to the artillery guy I've already got. Yeah, he actually gets that rocket artillery that I actually got as the upgrade by default, which is really, really damn cool. But he also gets the very nice benefit that any smoke on the field actually causes damage to enemy units as well, which is very, very good because, of course, he can actually create smoke behind him and this guy can actually create smoke. Oh, yeah. That's a nice little combo right there. And this is the first of the science mechs. So he's got Repulse, pushes all adjacent tiles. 
And yeah, he's also got uh, health 3, movement to 4. Yeah, the science are very much the support class. Like, you can see that he literally can't do any damage. But I imagine some of the science class weapons you can unlock are very, very good indeed. Potentially, I might consider taking out, say, the jet mech and the rocket mech here together with the big punchy lad instead of the science lad. But I imagine, because they're quite weak at the beginning of the game, the science mechs get kind of beastly later. I don't know. We'd have to see. But... We will indeed, I am sure, find out, ladies and gentlemen, because this is totally returning in live stream format. That's 100% happening. So, I will see you there for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been the absolutely phenomenally good Into the Breach. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got ourselves. I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out- DIE YOU MOVING BASTARDS! DIE! DIE! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.